Everyone who works with or around concrete is required to understand the safety precautions that must be followed on government construction projects. Dangers during concrete work include working from heights, working around loads, not wearing the proper personal protective equipment, working with equipment, reinforced steel, shoring and inspections, structural and reinforcing steel, and the removal of formwork. No matter what activity is being performed, the fall protection threshold is always going to be six feet on government construction projects, unless specified otherwise, such as excavations. So, if the concrete work is going to be over six feet, you might want to consider taking a fall protection course, as well as this course on concrete safety. If you're a site safety and health officer, and have a certificate already, it might be a good idea to check the expiration date on your certificate. Most of them expire within a couple of years, and a refresher is needed. If you're an SSHO for a project that will require employees to be working at heights over six feet, consider taking a competent person for fall protection course prior to being submitted for the project. Employees are never permitted to work above or in positions exposed to protruding reinforcing steel, fasteners, or other impalement hazards unless provisions have been made to control the hazard. In fact, the following are requirements when working with loads on government construction projects. Workers are never to work under concrete buckets, bundled material loads, or other suspended loads. If using elevated concrete buckets and loads, they'll need to be routed to a sensible distance, which should minimize falling loads or material hazards to workers, and riding on concrete buckets or other suspended loads is absolutely prohibited. Based on hazard evaluations conducted by supervisors, the site safety and health officer or competent person must identify and select personal protective equipment or PPE and safety equipment that will provide appropriate protection for the work being performed. All personal protective equipment will be provided by the contractor to the employees and will be maintained in a sanitary and reliable condition whenever the hazard dictates. Bulk storage bins, containers, or silos must have cone-shaped or have tapered bottoms with either mechanical or pneumatic means of starting the flow of material. In the summer of 2016, a concrete finisher was electrocuted when the handle of the 29-foot-long metal bull float he was using contacted an energized 7,200-volt power line. The crew was doing concrete finishing work for a driveway. The decedent was facing south, finishing the concrete driveway, and the power lines were at his back, north, when the incident occurred. He was wearing non-electrical rated rubber boots over his leather work boots, vinyl work gloves, hard hat, and safety glasses. When the bull float handle contacted the overhead line, he fell forward, letting go of the pole. As you can understand, lack of appropriate PPE played a big role in this accident. If bull float handles are used, they must be constructed of non-conductive material or insulated with a non-conductive sheath whose electrical and mechanical characteristics provide equivalent protection. All concrete buckets equipped with hydraulic or pneumatically operated gates must have positive safety latches or similar safety devices installed. This will help prevent premature or accidental dumping. The buckets will need to be designed in a way that prevents materials from accumulating on the top and sides of the bucket. Prior to post-tensioning operations, signs and barriers must be erected to limit employee access to the area. Any employee not essential to post-tensioning operations is not permitted behind jacks or end anchorages during post-tensioning operations. Hi, I'm Jesse from Titan University, the leader in government construction safety, quality control, and environmental training. We hope you enjoyed the module preview from our online course, Concrete Safety and Requirements on Government Construction Projects. Please like, share, and comment if you did. We'd really appreciate it. If you want to learn more or get your Concrete Safety and Requirements Certificate, head on over to Titan University by clicking the link below. Our courses are affordable and easy to comprehend.
Plus, we also have course materials you can download to assist you. The Concrete Safety course has several modules. But take your time. All of our courses save your place if you have to walk away. Take as long as you like to complete it. Please don't forget to like and share. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. We're happy to assist and hope to see you over on Titan University.